So is this the border? This is the border. So this is, okay, which, that, that's this is, this, this, uh, the UK and that's Ireland? No, 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 other way around. This is the UK. That's this Ireland. Is, uh, this is Ireland. I invite them to try imposing passport <laughs> checks here, really, you know, they can let them try. This is border country, the dividing line between the British province of Northern Ireland and the Irish Republic. It was created in 1922, when Ireland became a free state and Ulster remained British. The border between the UK and the Republic of Ireland has been divisive all its life. In Northern Ireland, more hotly loyal to the British Crown than England itself, are 800,000 Ulstermen of Protestant ancestry. She is a Protestant monarch, sitting on a Protestant throne! This border is the fault line of a centuries-old conflict between Catholic Republicans and Protestant Unionists. In 1968, it erupted in three decades of armed violence known as the Troubles. Now, it's the dead end that Brexit can't get past. It's triggered the biggest constitutional crisis of most of our lifetimes, taken down governments, and is why Britain faces its second general election in as many years. We all agree to go uh, for a general election on December the 12th. But how many British voters actually understand why? We drove the length of this border to meet the people who understand it better than anyone, whose lives and futures are at the heart of the Brexit crisis. Our first stop was Omeath. The, the middle of the road now is the border, so that yeah. side's in the Republic. You're kidding, and this, and this side's in, in Northern, Ireland. Northern Ireland. So you're in the Republic, I'm in Northern Ireland. Seamus Murphy is a local historian and former journalist who is campaigning against Brexit. He gave us the Republican view of the border. I was reared, you know, not to accept it. Simply, we, we don't. It's, it's imposed. It's not our border. And we will laugh at it at every opportunity. And we will cheat it and smuggle across it and whatever, because it's not ours. The soldiers put in a set of iron spikes in the road there and myself and my brother pulled them out. Were they hard work to get out? No, no, we just rocked them for 20 minutes and we had them all out. What kind of year was it that you and your brother were? That in 1971. Were picking we, up posts. We, we pulled the spikes out, 1970, 71. Would you consider yourself a criminal for doing that? Not at all. You consider the people who put the posts there were criminals. This is my country. What, somebody else can't tell me, you know, what's right and wrong. Well, there are two graveyards, and the fence that runs between them is the border. Divided even in death and all that. <laughs> what is the border for you? What does it mean for you? This Brexit has been imposed upon us, just as the border was once imposed upon our people in 1921. And once again, it, that was done by force, and this has effectively been done in the same way. The worst possible outcome is one which ruins the local economy, particularly with regard to farming products and food products. That, that's where we are most vulnerable. That will inevitably play into the hands of those who wish to see some sort of resumption of violence. I hope personally that Boris Johnson's deal goes through because that's the best way of leaving us alone. As for what he wants to do in the Irish Sea, honestly, that's his problem. Farming is Northern Ireland's biggest industry, and farmers in particular worry that any changes to the border brought about by Brexit could be devastating. As they're about to leave, the farmer finally appears. It isn't long before he's chatting and complaining about some bomb damage to his farmhouse. Well, the bomb was in the ditch yeah. for the troops. Oh, yeah. And they were just passed through when it went off. In Bell Coo, Unionist John Sheridan's land is surrounded on three sides by the Republic. He voted Remain. The north and just behind it is the south. If that border that is just all around us now becomes the border with Europe, what difference is that going to make to your life? Uh, confinement, end of freedom. We're confined from our markets also. 50% uh, of our lamb have to go south for processing. 37% of the milk that's produced in Northern Ireland goes south for processing. And how much of your business is with Europe? Uh, 50%. Uh, our markets will be gone. 
Do you think you'd be better off as being in Europe but not in the UK? Or do you think it would be better to be in the UK but not in Europe? Oh no, I've always been uh, an advocate of Europe. Uh, one, for the peace that it helped broker. Uh, and at the end of the day, you know, when you're paying your mortgage, you're paying your higher purchase bills on cars or you need for your business, you know, you need to be able to put bread and butter on the table. Mm. And, uh, and you can't eat a flag, Phoebe, you know. Do you think a lot of people who live along the border who voted Remain just feel completely done over by the rest of the UK? Of course they do. Yeah. Yes, of course they do. Uh, because they weren't thought about. And sure, it's, it's quite obvious. Uh, what has been the problem with Brexit all along? Only that border on this island. We drove on to Pettigo, a pretty town divided by a river which currently marks the border between the Irish Republic and the UK. A long history of everyday smuggling here will take on a whole new life if this river becomes a border with the EU. This is a smuggler. She's on a return trip from Britain into Ireland with quantities of butter, bread and tin food, all of which are cheaper in Ulster. Smuggling is an old tradition around here, and they start them kind of young. Irish police have warned it will mean an increase in organised crime, but a more immediate concern for local businesses is what it will mean for cross-border trade. So how many of your customers are from the north and how many are from the Republic, would you say? 35, 40 percent of them are from the north. What kind of impact is that going to have if, you know, it's going to be illegal for people from the north essentially to come and buy your milk? Are you worried about it? Probably a little, but it seems we've got the, got the lead again Brexit and then as soon as that happens you forget about it and then once I think Brexit is about to take place you start to worry again about it and this has gone on and on, you know, for years now. Years, nearly now, yeah. You know, you see people marching to the one borders and all that, so it, it doesn't take too much sometimes to get people doing things that you wouldn't like them to be doing, you know. A few miles back into the UK, we reached Castle Derg in County Tyrone. This is loyalist heartland, but the upcoming general election is expected to be a tightly fought race between Republican and Unionist candidates here, not for the first time. They say this is three elections in one. Firstly, it is a general election. Then it's a test of the bitterly divided Unionist vote. 54% of people in Northern Ireland voted to remain, and many view this election as Brexit round two. The divided Unionist bloc is so anxious about winning here, it's only putting forward one unity candidate. But voters like Delma McConnell are still confused. Did you um, vote in the referendum? I did. Sorry. I did vote and I vote not to leave. Uh. Mm -hmm. Because it's not that I know uh, a lot about Brexit, I don't. In mainland in England it's quite simple, well sort of simple, but like if, in the election if you're mm -hmm. pro-Brexit you'd probably vote Tory and if you're anti-Brexit you're more likely to vote Lib Dem or Labour. Mm -hmm. What are the options in Northern Ireland because it's different isn't it? I really don't know. Yeah. If somebody would come in, any member of the political parties would yeah. come in and say, OK, uh, Delma, you're here 24 years and this is what Brexit is going to do to you. That's good. That's bad. I'll go out. I'll put on my vote. Do you think people are bored of Brexit? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Do people talk about it anymore? Nobody talks about it. I reckon though, that if people are already bored of Brexit, though, they may not bother going out to vote. What do you think? I think people will go out to vote because they've had enough of it. Mm. And I think that they want it finished. Yeah. Lovely. Oh, look at that. Ten times better. You wouldn't think I was on a mountain this morning. Not at all. Are you finished? Brilliant. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Just over the road at the Castle Inn, pub landlord Derek Hussey, a former Ulster Unionist Party politician, is firmly pro-Brexit. His concern, like thousands of other loyalists, is that Boris Johnson's deal is a betrayal that will force Northern Ireland closer towards unification with the Republic. Are you surprised by how the British government has treated Northern Ireland in this yes. Brexit? It doesn't surprise me, but uh, it more or less shocks me. And I find it concerning that there is something which would more closely 
align us in Northern Ireland to the Republic of Ireland as opposed to the United Kingdom. A lot of the media coverage and political commentators, they mm. talk about the conflict coming back, security concerns. At this moment in time, I can't see it returning to that level. But there is, uh, there is the situation where our, our policing uh, has been reduced dramatically. Uh, the military presence within Northern Ireland is very, very far from what it was in fact. Now, that's to be welcomed. But there's also a fear in that, because if, if trouble did materialise, uh, who would be there to defend uh, the ordinary people of Northern Ireland? Uh, the uncertainty, to me, has been the biggest issue that we have had to deal with in this area. It's not the problem of Brexit, it's the problem of uncertainty. Yeah. 30 minutes up the road, Straban rivals Castle Derg as the most bombed town in Ireland. 200 bombs in five years have reduced the town centre to rubble. Straban is 90% Catholic. It has strong Republican traditions. During the Troubles, Straban also had the highest unemployment rate in the industrialised world. It's still among the highest in Europe. Shop fast while shops last is the word in Straban. At the Straban Chronicle, we met the star photographer, Davy Rolston. You know, Straban historically has been so far away from the seat of power, you know, that basically no one cares about it. You know? What's it like now? It's got slightly better. People live and work on both sides of the border. You know, their lives are both sides of the border. Everything here is both sides of the border. To all intents and purposes, there is no border. With Brexit coming along, it could change that. It's going to make a huge difference to us now. People will start to feel fearful again, on both communities, by the way. This isn't just one side or the other. You'll find if you speak to unionist loyalist communities, they're going to find this exactly the same thing. A search for an English identity has caused Brexit, which is having fallout everywhere within the UK and its closest neighbour, which is Ireland. Yeah. Our last stop was Londonderry, or Derry, a city so divided, it's got two names. It's where the troubles began, with civil rights protests, then riots and the Bloody Sunday Massacre. Father, how many dead have you seen in the bog side? Probably about four dead at this moment. And they're thrown in as if they were dead meat. You have no worries about this action? None at all. It's also where the conflict claimed its most recent victim, journalist Lyra McKee, who was killed during clashes between police and protesters in April this year. In a gym in the city's waterside area, we met all-island bodybuilding champion Danny Butterfield, who tried to explain the city's sectarian tensions. So you lived in Londonderry all your life, Londonderry or Derry? Which oh, Derry. Derry. What's the... What's the thing with London Derry and Derry? Derry is usually considered to be a Roman Catholic, and London Derry is considered to be Protestant. I, I would call it Derry. My brother-in-law calls it London Derry, and that's fine. It's really a religion thing. It's okay. really a religion thing. It is a, a legacy that will take more than my lifetime to fuzzle out. How do you think life in Derry would change? if that border that's only five miles away right. wasn't a border with the Republic, but it was a border with Europe. Again, it's down to religion thing. Mm. Uh, if the Protestants get in and they get uh, a border, or, or sorry, they don't want a border, they want a, uh, or they do want a border. It's sorry, it's confusing. You, it's, it? It, is, <laughs> it, is, it is confusing yeah. for people like yourselves outside looking in. I must be completely insane, <laughs> completely insane. For, for both sides actually, you know, it will make things more difficult. Uh, how, I don't know, but only the future can tell us that. What we have here is a confidential report by Johnson's own government marked official sensitive. Johnson has said definitively, and I quote, there'll be no checks between Northern Ireland and Great Britain under his deal. In private, the government says something very, very different. 
it says there will be customs declarations and security checks between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. It's there in black and white. No one we met could tell us how life on the border will change after Brexit. But what they all said is the uncertainty is dangerous. In this election, it feels like once again, the futures of people on this border are being gambled with by politicians and voters who can have no idea how high the stakes here really are.